Solo cell found. Random class. Random passive tree. No stash. Items deleted on death. Waypoints only. With the goal of a headhunter. This is... Insanity. As the intro stated, the goal for this series is a headhunter. Considering the restrictions on this series, this is no easy feat. As the footage rolls of my leveling process to get into maps, I'm going to explain my general roadmap for how I'm going to acquire the headhunter. To my knowledge, there are three ways to get a headhunter currently. The first is to run Nemesis maps and hope to get it lucky as a drop, or to chance and scour leather belts repeatedly until eventually you get a headhunter. This is the most unlikely of the three. The second way is to use the temple's sacrificial chamber, specifically level three, which requires a certain base type for sacrifice, and the result will be that base type and only that base type. So for example, if I sacrifice a unique belt, like a worm's molt, then it will only give me another unique belt. It does not guarantee a leather belt specifically, but it still cuts down the odds drastically of getting what I don't want and increases the likelihood of it being a headhunter. The third and final way is to use the bestiary random unique belt craft. And to do this, I'll have to farm maps and hopefully get enough beasts for that specific recipe to use it enough to get the headhunter. Again, this is very unlikely. Farming divination cards is also another way to get a headhunter, but due to the restrictions on the account and having to set up my atlas and requiring a bunch of materials to target farm specific divination cards, this method is not going to work. For these three options, I'll need to farm pure chaos from both drops and from the chaos recipe, which the recipe will be kind of tough due to no stashing, so my inventory space is very limited. These chaos orbs will be used to run nemesis maps, which cost two chaos each. I'll also need chance orbs, scour orbs, and unique belts, because the unique belts will be sacrificed in the temple, and the chance and scour orbs will be used to chance regular leather belts inside of the nemesis maps. To acquire all of these necessary items, I'll need to just run regular maps and delve a bunch. Delve usually gives you quite a bit of raw currency drops and regular maps will be used for getting the unique belts and pretty much everything else. So this roadmap represents the long-term goal of the entire series. The short term would be to get a fast and reliable build, which requires good gear and good passes. My current plan is to go for Molten Strike because, as you know from the first episode, if you haven't seen it, go back and watch it, but we landed on the Marauder as our class and the Berserker as our Ascendancy, so we're pretty limited in what we have for skills. Molten Strike is a very easy skill to scale and it has a very high ceiling in terms of damage and clear speed. However, reaching these points requires really good gear and really good passives, so my short-term goals are as follows. The first is to kill Elder as soon as possible for the respect point because my current passive tree doesn't have a lot of synergy. Also during this time, I'll potentially farm the tier 6 Constrictor, which is one of the Elder's Guardians, for the Grailwood Shank, which gives point blank, which is essential for Molden Strike builds and will save me a bunch of passive points. The next goal will be to complete all white maps for even more respect points. Then I'll farm Uber Lab for currency, gear, and potential Molten Strike enchant, that would be the dream. Fourth will be to kill the Shaper for more respects, and then finally I can begin the Headhunter grind and farm once the gear is good enough. Also at this time I'll probably attempt Uber Elder. And that is a basic overview of what I'm going to have to farm and grind repeatedly, end on end, hours upon hours, until we finally get that headhunter. What's up everybody? So I thought I'd give you an update on the character. So I am currently level 73. We got 444 strength, couldn't have planned it better. Uh, as the video stated, I am gonna go Molten Strike. So I've already started pretty much revamping the passive tree for it. So Avatar Fire, because Molten Strike converts, it's either 60% or 50% here. 60%, so I'm losing a little bit, that's fine. So I want to convert all to fire because it's way easier to scale fire damage with stuff like this and this, especially with the, uh, the penetration nodes over here. I'm gonna go for Lava Lash pretty soon. And on top of that, I'm using Molten Strike, so the projectile scaling is also very good. So I'll take uh, Fury Bolts and then eventually I'll work towards Point Blank. I also mentioned in the video getting the Grailwood Shank, that would probably save me all those passive points, so at least 8 passive points, which is massive, so I'll probably probably go for that. Other than that, uh, I'm going to do a map. So I have changed the rules a tiny bit, instead of being able to stash tiers as soon as I 
uh, complete all of them. So for instance, all the tier ones, once I complete all of them, as you can see, I haven't done these two yet, then I can stash them. I just decided to stash all maps because there's really no point. My inventory is already going to get pretty cluttered. Also, I just realized I have a a safe item because I killed Katava and due to the rules, I said I could have one plus one item stash when I killed Katava. So I can put that in there, save some space, cool. Anyway, uh, I will do a map and you can see the build so far. See where we're standing in terms of damage and everything else. Survivability, it should have copies this. Oh, 70? 71 lightning. Uh-oh, ready to get one shot. I just give you guys an update on where the character stands. I'm not doing tectonic slam, that was just for leveling. I did go ahead and take uh, the war cry nodes near the duelist because it allows for instant war cries coupled with the berserker ascendancy which gives you 25% life and mana when you use a war cry. That's pretty powerful. So it's literally like a, a seething flask or something. And again, Durin Shard is off of that. And it doesn't take away from my animation. So I figured it's very important to have that. So I'll probably speed up this footage, just get to the end of the map so you can see the character. Right now we're using a pretty crappy axe. What's the DPS on this bad boy? 228. So this is with that and it's 1.3 attacks per second, which is why our multi-strike is hitting super slow. Got a chisel. That was a lot of damage. What the heck? Pick that up too. I'm still looking for a better shield. Oh, lab trial. That's my proxy. I didn't see that. Let's see which one we got. Stinging doubt. We're doing it, baby. Hopefully we don't die. It's almost impossible to die in lab trials with uh, the war cry node like I was talking about. Like, that was super scary, but just boat, pop the work right. You're fine. This is also a really easy uh, trial. Don't even have to grab that. Like, look, it's immortal call. Just makes it so I can't die to anything. If I get stuck, just immortal crawl or uh, enduring cry. And it's a pretty easy game. I'll go over my. Uh... Oh, I need to open that. Oh my god. Move. There we go. And we're done with the drop. Easy game. Easy life. And I've also decided to count fragments as maps. So I'm just going to stash fragments as well. So uh, any like Aziri fragments or the offerings to the goddess, those are technically related to maps. So I'm going to stash them. I know I, I can't really get away with saying they're related to maps because then chaos are related to maps. I can stash those. Alks are related to maps. So I'm not going to do currency, but I'm going to do the... Uh, like the actual map accessory devices, I guess, if that makes sense. So sack frags and offering to the goddess. It's actually been a couple days since I played my character. That's why I'm kind of all over the place in terms of what I'm doing. It feels good to be in maps, though, for sure, compared to leveling up. All right. Let's not stand like this one. Oh my god. Yeah, so. Pretty good damage. It's a tier 1 map, obviously, so not a very good test of <laughs> how much damage a build does. But I think we're in a good spot right now. And I have, like, no penetration. I actually have a little bit. Let's see. I've got a uh, 4% there. That doesn't give any. 3% here, I think? Yeah, so 7%. And that's it. That's literally all the pin I have. So I'll get another 8% there. I think something gives fire pin up here. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, so yeah, we have, a, we have a lot more scaling to get done. So let's... I was about to portal out. I don't have portal scrolls. That's part of the series. So I have to log out every time I do a map. I have to log out, go back to Oriath, wait for it to load, then go to my hideout, and then start again. So I am thinking... Uh, I keep checking this occasionally because for some reason she's selling detonate mines. I have no idea. I haven't got this as a drop. I don't know why she's selling it. So it makes me think that she will also sell portal. And that's technically not a portal scroll because I said waypoints only, no portal scrolls, not no portal gem. Eh? So if I get one as a drop, maybe I can use portal gem instead of portal. I don't know. That's maybe cheating. All right. So here's the current character setup. So we're doing Molten Strike with Ancestral Call, Ellie Focus, uh, Wed, Concentrated Effect, and Multi-Strike. Eventually, I'm gonna drop Multi-Strike for vicious, vicious Projectiles once I get uh, Point Blank. 
right here, or I get the Grail Witch Shank, which has point blank, because this should net me more damage in the long run. Other than that, we're doing uh, Ancestral Protector with Combustion, which just gives us uh, more fire penetration. Leap Slam with Fortified Blood Magic, faster attacks, typical stuff. Uh, we have Castman Damage taken, Wave of Conviction, that's also where more penetration is, because the last thing hit by Wave of Conviction, so if you're fighting a boss, it's gonna be the only thing hit, uh, loses 25% resistance, so that's just more penetration. And this is a level one Chasm damage taken, so that'll pretty much proc all the time. I got a Vol Grace from a drop, so that's pretty good. Blood Rage, Anger for the Aura, not Hatred, because Hatred's garbage. We got Vol Lightning Trap, it's also pretty lucky. And then this is like a level, yeah, level three Chasm damage taken with Immortal Call, Increased Duration, and then Enduring Cry, because Increased Duration affects uh, the Life Regen by Enduring Cry as well. And that's pretty much it. I mean, you can hover over the gear here. That's a pretty good ring, actually. It's not terrible. Belt's okay. This ring's okay. That's pretty garbage. I have to juggle getting int and dex on my stuff. I could drop some levels on, like, the Grace and the Blood Rage, for example, because this only requires 59 dex. So the most dex I'll need is probably from gems. Unless I get the Grail with Shank, then I'll need the dex. So it's probably good to... Sorry, my phone's ringing. It's my girlfriend. Let me, uh... All right, sorry about that. My girlfriend called me. Uh, so I'm just finishing up going over the character. That's pretty much it. We're in a okay place right now. The axe probably needs to be upgraded to 28 DPS. It's not terrible. I'm still doing pretty good amount of damage, but other than that, that's, uh, that's basically where we're at. So the passive tree, just, I've been specking into more life using the respect points from Katava and leveling up. We have Avatar Fire. I already went over this pretty much. Uh, took some axe nodes. We got a wildfire. There's, you actually get one of these from Act 5 as a quest reward, but I vendored mine because I didn't think I'd go mol Molten Strike for some reason. And then I got one as a drop and I was like, you know what, let's go into multi uh, Molten Strike. It's probably way better. Turns out it's way better. Uh, so yeah, other than that, I'm going to progress maps a bunch, get a lot of footage, and hopefully episode four will come out in, I don't know, a few days. Hopefully four or five days. Maybe not that long. Who, see, who knows? All right, thanks for watching, guys.